This is the new Villa 9215. It's the unit that we've developed just especially for the U.S. market, uh, meets American uh, piping standards, and it's also designed to take a new place in the separate line. The difference of our uh, unit in the 9215 is really a change out from the 9210, which is the unit that was designed for tiny houses, RVs, mobile applications, smaller buildings. Now what's happened with the 9215 is we've increased the size of the vent tube from what was a 75 millimeter tubing to standard US 3 inch schedule 40, which anyone who's installed a villa is going to say, Whew, that's great. Um, because it's now all standard U.S. plumbing sizes. We've also made a difference in the fan unit. We've, we're using the fan casing that was in the 9210, but we've got a new style fan that's in it that is a little more powerful, and it will help take that position of where people felt they needed to move up to the 9200 fan because they were going a little bit longer distance with their venting. Now they'll still be able to use the 9215, which is a fan that will work on AC or DC power, and the adapters are included with both. But it's a little more powerful fan, still very, very quiet, and it will vent a longer distance. CFMs, all of that, we've got comparisons on our website, so you'll be able to do the comparisons there. But for most people who are needing to move up to a 9200 AC only unit before, they'll be able to do it with the 9215. So let's do a quick review. The 9215, a little bit larger piping, it will match in with 3 inch schedule 40. Still single speed fan. So don't look for a high-low switch on it. And as always, with the separate units, we do not put an on-off switch on it because whenever there is solid waste in the holding chamber, the fan needs to operate. So no on-off switch so no one inadvertently turns the power off to the fan. In operation, same type of tray in terms of the urine diversion of the setup. Separate started urine diversion during the 1970s. They are still the best at it in terms of an ergonomic setup that naturally works, that you don't have to decide what you're gonna do when, when you sit down on the toilet. You simply sit down on the toilet seat. The uh, concealment screen opens in the back for solid waste to go to the back and urine goes to the front. Now in this section, this clip that's in the back, which is the extender for it, does come out and so this is a very important addition in terms of helping for women to consistently hit the urine trap um, but comes out for easy cleaning and if it's a house full of men you don't necessarily need this in so it's a removable item um, now we ship with a sample of our bio drain tap and which in normal use of the toilet our recommendation is that you are putting about a cup of uh, white vinegar down the line each week to help keep the urine line clean. But if that doesn't keep up with any buildup, use the BioDrain tab. So when you initially get it, put this aside, keep it in case you need it later. And then if you seem to be slowing on the urine, drop it down in there, it'll break it up and then buy a group of them. They're available on our website and you, you can use them periodically. So standard use of the toilet before using you're going to open it up, take a roll of um, off the compostable bags, and the roll of bags that come with it are the bags that we manufacture in Scandinavia from Separet. Um, so they're separate branded bags. These are a 1.1 mil compostable bag. We also on our website if you're an Airbnb or a tiny house user who changes your bags out more frequently, there is a bag that's from BioBag that is a lighter weight bag uh, that you can use um, for uh, lining it instead. It's almost easier if you take this out. Go like this. And then just go right over the outside. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, like so. And back in. I'm putting this in, do it on a little bit of an angle because you do have the fan up in the back here and it's got a screen on it, all right? Now, another point, when this goes up, these hinges have a latch on them that if you see, they're dropping down into place. Just make sure that when this is up, those have dropped down so this doesn't come down on you. Okay, so 
You line the compostable liner section. Now a couple notes on it. This is on a rotation section. And what activates that is every time that we have pushed down on the seat, we are both opening the concealment screen to the back and we're rotating the bin below. That gives even distribution of the solid waste within the holding area. Um, then when we lift up on the toilet. Now, I will get questions at times relative to use of the unit. You do need to be sitting on the seat with your weight down for that to be open. Um, if you don't, the screen's gonna come back. And so if you're taking and you're using the toilet hovering or standing up to wipe, that won't work. You need to keep pressure on the seat for that to be open for the waste and the paper to go in, okay? So, solid waste in the back, you're into the front. After about three weeks of full-time use for a family of two or three or so, we're simply going to take this section, tie off the bag, take it out. It goes to the compost or approved solid waste disposal or our incinerator. We put a fresh liner in and we're good to go, okay? Nothing but solid waste and toilet paper in the back. No other organic material, no peat, no chips, no coconut husks, nothing else. The separate system works on the basis of we have the fan in the back, which is continually drawing air through this crack that's here when it's closed. So this isn't uptight, there's a space here. Um, over the top of the solid waste. It's drying out the waste, which is removing the moisture weight, and it is also venting out any odor that would be developing or coming off the top of the solid waste. Our separation of the urine and the solids means we are not mixing the nitrogen-rich urine with the bacteria-rich solids, which cause those solids to bloom and give us that sulfur smell, which is the normal smell of sewage or poop. Um, so it's drying it out. After about three weeks or so, we're gonna take that out and then dispose of it. And our composting is really done outside of the toilet. We're not working on the basis of trying to compost within the toilet because our feeling is that human pathogens go benign in fecal matter aerobically in a minimum period of time of six months. No, no composting toilet keeps the material in for longer than that. All composting toilets, when they're emptied, have to go to a compost area to finish composting. Our feeling, why make the mess in the toilet? Let's take it all nice and contained out in a compostable liner. Now, when that comes out, we might have a little condensation or something in the bucket, but we're not cleaning waste out of the bucket. We're just using a little spray cleaner, wiping it down, and it's nice and clean. Now, for general cleaning on the toilet overall, a non-abrasive spray cleaner. So, um, you know, generally in cleaning the toilet on a weekly basis, you can open it up, spray it down, wipe it down with a paper towel, push the button, throw the paper towel right in with the solid waste because the paper and the solid waste can both go into the compost area and will break down. Now, folks will ask me about toilet paper. Most all toilet paper now will break down in the compost area. If you use heavy four-ply paper, it's gonna take that much longer. If you use a, a single or two-ply two paper, it's gonna break down faster. So, you know, choose your comfort level there. Um, one thing to keep in mind, things like soft scrub have an abrasive in them. This is a, a polyethylene molded plastic. It's got a beautiful finish on it. It looks the closest thing to a porcelain type unit um, while it's in, in the bathroom. But if you use an abrasive cleaner on it, you will mar the finish. So strictly liquid, non-abrasive cleaners in it. Nothing has a cream paste, et cetera, because they do have abrasives. So be careful with those. So all in all, that's a review of the new unit. Hope you like it.